This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hello everyone! As promised, today's video is going to be the most voted request on my last week's community post. The most voted request was by Carolina Vicente, who asked How do you choose what to do with your study time? How do you prioritize doing practice tests, reading the books, making notes, practice exercises? How is it different with different subjects? I was very happy that this was the most voted comment because I think it's a really interesting subject to cover. In this video, I'm going to go through my advice on how to achieve a good balance between the work you have to do and the work you should actually be doing in order to achieve better results. However, I also need to say that I think that the advice I'll be giving here applies to classes that are evaluated with tests, quizzes and exams, and not essays or creative assignments. If you want me to talk a little bit more about that type of evaluation in a future video, I will gladly do so. Before I go through all of that, I want to give a shout out to our book club, since Booktober is finally upon us. This month we will have not one, but several fall-related or spooky books to choose from and discuss together. If you want to join, all the details will be provided in the description box below. First of all, let's divide all study tasks into one of these two categories, practical and theoretical. Practical study tasks include creating new study materials with a new twist on the theory like flashcards and mind maps, solving cases or exercises, doing mock tests or explaining the lecture subject to a friend. Theoretical study tasks include reading your textbooks and articles, revising past notes or writing summaries from pre-existent materials. Basically, theoretical study tasks are related to a passive approach to studying and practical tasks are related to an active approach. Inside these two categories, there are tasks you should prioritize over the others. In my experience, in theoretical study, you should always value your class notes or documents written by a professor over other authors' textbooks or materials. If your lecturer is the person who is going to evaluate you, they will value answers that are customized according to the lectures. Sometimes textbooks portray opinions that clash with your professor's ideas and that may harm you in your final exam. So study your class notes first of all and only secondly study your textbooks. For practical study, I can only talk for myself as a visual learner. If you are a visual learner like me, I recommend creating mind maps as the number one priority task and then solving tasks as the second most important task. Mind maps are one of the most effective study techniques I've ever learned in my life. As a visual learner, I noticed major improvement in the retention of information if I led all the concepts on the mind map. That allowed me to structure the entire information for a dozen of chapters in a short time and revision time is always simpler and faster. After those, I also recommend doing tons of practice papers. You need to be very careful and smart when you are planning out your study sessions. Not all courses or classes are the same, and some will rely on a theoretical approach and others in a more practical approach. When in doubt, or in the beginning of a new course, I suggest you apply the 50-50 rule and divide your study time between theoretical and practical equally. This means, for instance, that if you have one hour to study for one class, you can use half an hour to go through the theory and read and revise past notes, and the other half to complete some practice tests or create some flashcards or mind maps. However, this balance between practical and theoretical should be assessed according to whatever you're studying. For instance, if you are in a sciences or math course, perhaps it should be 80% practical and 20% theoretical. If you are studying history, like I am right now, an inverted balance may be ideal. When I studied law, for instance, my study sessions were mostly 50-50. I used the first half of the session to read my notes and the other half to solve cases and tests. Another strategy is creating the balance between theoretical and practical, not within the same study session, but in different days. If you schedule two one-hour study sessions for each class every week, you can use the first study session to read your textbooks and the second to test your knowledge on the subject by completing some practice tests. You may ask, however, which one you should prioritize, learning the theory or knowing how to apply it. Well, my answer varies depending on your learning goals. 
If your main goal is to get a good grade in your next test or exam, then according to my experience, it's more important to prioritize active learning and practical studying methods. I say that because most professors use the same strategies to evaluate students across time. If you have access to past tests or exams or even practice sheets, you can start predicting the way you are going to be tested, the length of the required answers, and even the type of information you should use in your answer. Some questions are even repeated, and sometimes you can clearly see that your professor values certain chapters in your lecture materials and completely ignores others. As you practice this a couple of times, you will feel more prepared and will do a better job in the day of your exam. For example, when I was in law school, I remember that for a couple of courses, I was able to accurately predict what would be asked in the exam, so I simply skipped all the chapters that had nothing to do with those questions. Instead of learning 100% of what was lectured during the semester, I actually learned about 50%. I got a good grade, but I ended up with poor knowledge on the subject. As such, practicing this type of mechanical answers is not the best type for those who want to obtain a vaster experience out of their classes or courses. Despite your evaluation, if you are passionate about the subject, you can go beyond what's required of you in the day of the exam and deepen your knowledge on that particular topic. Even if there is no grade to prove that you've studied a chapter that didn't come across in the exam, you will carry on that knowledge to a future class or simply in your professional life. On the other hand, I believe that having a very solid grasp on the theory can impact your grades a lot. Knowing the theory well will give a new depth to your answers and get you from a B to an A. Also, there are classes that, due to their nature, do not allow you to skip certain parts and actually have a snowball effect. That happens, for instance, in descriptive geometry, which I studied for two years, and maths. Some fields of law are also very linear, and you need to learn the whole theoretical background to understand how to apply it, but other fields of law are not that linear and you can skip around quite a bit. So overall, this is what I think. If you lack the time, prioritize practical study tasks over theoretical ones. This will allow you to pass the class because you are preparing for an evaluation. However, if you want to get an incredible grade, I also think it's fundamental to master the theory, so it's important to divide your time according to whatever balance you think applies to your course. If you can't even think about doing that division right away for the whole semester, I also advise you to master the practical first and the background theory afterwards. Before we end today's video, I want to talk a little bit more about Squarespace. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform to create your own website. You can create a beautiful website with award-winning templates to start your own business, blog, you name it. The best thing about Squarespace is that it's used by a wide range of creatives and people, from musicians, designers, lifestyle bloggers and more. The platform is all-in-one, so there's no need to install any program, patch or upgrade, so the process of designing your website is as simple as it can get. You also get 24-7 customer support, as well as a unique domain experience that's simple to set up and completely transparent. Go to squarespace.com slash Mariana to get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I will see you next week. Bye!